Tabua, 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 Untuk terlihat kembali guna barang enam puluh lima enam bantu enam sen. Oh lor lima, lagi lagi susu dalam pasar. Untuk untuk terlihat enam bola FM enam bantu enam sen. Bola FM. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In this bulletin, police officers face disciplinary action for laxity. Prime Minister's Northern Tour results in more benefits for Fijians. And piped water problems for Nandi residents almost at an end. A directive has been issued for police officers to be disciplined for any laxity in responding to complaints. This is in relation to a spate of robberies in Nerere Nasinu in recent weeks, which were highlighted by FBC News. Farzana Nisha has more. Police Chief of Operations ACP Rusiati Tundravu has ordered investigations against officers who failed to attend complaints of robberies in Nerere Nasinu. Uh, investigation now. Uh... Uh, lead to our inaction, then uh, responsible officers will be dealt with according to our disciplinary uh, because it is not good uh, for the image and the integrity of the organization. Eh? Divisional Police Commander Southern Suliano Bambukoro has been directed to take disciplinary action against officers who are found to be neglecting their duties. ACP Tundravu says people who continue to face difficulties with officers in their respective divisions should call their divisional police commanders directly. In the meantime, police have increased foot and mobile patrols in Nareri after complaints that robberies occur in the early hours of the morning. Yeah, we have analyzed that, and that is where we are um, deploying our manpower uh, in terms of um, the, the, the timing and also uh, during peak hours we are not normally peak hours, in areas where people are asleep at their home. Uh, that is where we are beefing up our, uh, our patrol in these areas. ACP Tundravu says a number of suspects were brought in, questioned and later released. Police investigations are continuing. Farzana Nisha, FBC News. The Prime Minister's tour to the north is resulting in more benefits to everyday Fijian. Eleanor Trangaviu with this report. The third day of the Prime Minister's tour in the Northern Division today saw hundreds of people gathering at the Lambasa taxi stand to witness government's assistance firsthand. The Prime Minister firstly opened the new $688,000 first floor extension of the Lambasa market, which will now give vendors more space to sell their produce. We have solved the problem of overcrowding and uncomfortable spacing. Selling will be more comfortable and secure, and vendors can be more confident about leaving their produce and goods unattended, even overnight. The Prime Minister also handed out 72 approval notices to individuals who have been living as squatters for years. Ladies and gentlemen, by having security of tenure, these squatters will no longer be squatters. They will have 99-year leases that will give them a sense of dignity and a sense of security that every Fijian deserves. It will also mean that these people will now build proper and permanent homes and they can now have access to funding from mainstream banks and other financial institutions to help them build their homes. As well, 252 individuals received $1,000 grants from the Prime Minister under the Micro and Small Business Grants. This now brings the total number of individuals assisted through this scheme to 4,700. I was confident that our micro and small uh, recipients were worthy of this scheme, but this program's popularity and success has gone beyond what we anticipated. We will continue to support the spirit of uh, entrepreneurship in Fiji and foster an environment that allows small and micro businesses to develop. The Prime Minister continues his tour of the Northern Division and will be in Savo Savo over the next few days. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. 
The opening of a new classroom block at Tinduanvata Secondary School in Lambasa will help properly cater for all students. In a little over a decade, the school has become an established institution with a school role of 87 and 15 teachers. Eleanor Tranga, view again. Getting Tunduwata Secondary School located on the Undu Peninsula is quite challenging. A rough two-hour ride from Lambasa town and then a 20-minute boat ride will get you to the school. Speaking at the school yesterday, Prime Minister Wurenge Mbanyamarama says there are challenges that rob children's access to education, but government is doing all it can to limit this. Our students' energy and attention should be devoted to their studies, not on how they'll be able to get to school. No student should be sent back because of where they call back call home in Fiji. That is unacceptable. And my government remains committed to giving every Fijian child equal access to education and an equal shot at life. Banimarama opened two new teachers' quarters, two new dormitories, including washrooms for both genders, beds and other boarding facilities for the school yesterday. It was built and donated through a Ministry of Education grant of $200,000. By improving and upgrading the boarding facilities, we have given more students a chance to live comfortably on campus instead of traveling great distances to get to school. These upgrades and purchases have not only been made that, uh, made that journey easier and safer, they also make the Norwater School a home away from home for more children than ever before. A parent at the school and the Mataniti Kino of Undu say with the new facilities, they hope to attract students from the surrounding villages, given that most of them are sent to the urban areas to get an education. This is one of the hardships we face every day. Our school is not well equipped and some of the buildings are too old. Before when children used to come to school, they had to stay outside because there is not enough space. Now we will be able to accommodate them. During a Talanoa session with the Prime Minister and the Minister for Education, the need for more qualified teachers at the school was raised. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy then informed them three new qualified teachers will be sent to the school at the start of the new school year. Dovata Secondary School was one of the schools in Vano level that was badly affected by Cyclone Thomas in 2013. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorangebaini Marama has opened a new two-story block to accommodate 110 students of Valimbasonga Secondary School in Lambasa. The cost of the project was just shy of $160,000 and was funded through the Prime Minister's office. Baini Marama says the government owes the students of Valimbasonga a proper place for learning. He says providing the right environment tells students and teachers the work they are doing here is important. We have made good on our promise to replace the classrooms that were burned only a few years ago. Losing your school rooms was a tragedy for you, but today... You have a school that is bigger, better, and more modern. That does not mean you go around and burn schools. We are investing in our school facilities throughout the country. We want to have the best possible teachers throughout the country to inspire our children. The PM's office also donated new desks and chairs as well as other school, school equipment. That's the government's job to provide for people equally and fairly, says Prime Minister Vorenge Banimarama. He was speaking at the commissioning of a water purification project at Naivindambu village on Monday. Eleanor Turangayevu with this report. It takes almost two hours from the main Senganga road to get to Naivindamu, a village which strongly supported the Sudelpa party in the 2014 general elections. This, however, has not deterred government in assisting the village in getting good and clean drinking water. I do not want uh, anyone to be left out and everyone should have an uh, equal share so that we can all move forward together. 
Speaking at the commissioning of the water purification project, the Prime Minister briefed the villagers on the state of the country's economy, which has been growing steadily for the last six years. The state of the economy has grown steadily for the past uh, six years. That is why government is providing free bus fare to our children, assistance is given to the poor and the elderly. The water purification project was completed by government at a total cost of $33,959 and will benefit 42 households in the village. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. Coming up after the break, South Pacific Stock Exchange wants to break into the PNG market. And I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa. I am Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa is locked in. I am here in Singapore. Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shelly in Tanga Nausori. Mirchi music is simply in Nausori. I am here in Bali. Mirchi FM is very nice. Welcome back to FBC News. Six Fijians will leave for New Zealand soon as part of a new work program for skilled labour. Employment Minister Semi Kori Lavesau says the new program requires workers with trade skills for contracts of up to one year. Maggie Boyle has more. There will be more opportunities for Fijians to work in Christchurch in New Zealand to help rebuild the earthquake ravaged city. Employment Minister Semi Korla says only people with trade experience and skills qualify under this new program. There's uh, another um, lot of workers for the rebuild of crisis. We are looking at at the moment. Uh, that is uh, another aspect of, uh, of uh, workers that they require. Uh, but uh, for the rebuild, that they will require people with. Uh, with the know-how and the ability to work as carpenters, plumbers and all that. Karla Vassar says while only six are earmarked for the pilot program, he expects more Fijians will be required within the year. Trades people that uh, they will go and work and also upskill them in the, pro in the process when they are working there to the New Zealand uh, approved standards. The rebuild of Christchurch is expected to cost the New Zealand government more than $34 billion over the coming years. The minister says this program is possible because of the performance of the workers under the recognised seasonal workers scheme. We received a very favourable result from New Zealand. In fact, uh, they have uh, suggested that they go ahead with new recruitments even without the completion of the, of the test. Uh, test uh, numbers that went there. They're very happy with them and uh, we're waiting for them to give us the requirement. The new program will complement the seasonal workers scheme which involved 31 Fijians in 2015 working on fruit orchards across New Zealand. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. A 40-year-old man from Nandi is in custody for allegedly setting fire to Maya's hotel located along the Nandi back road this morning. The incident is alleged to have occurred shortly after midnight. The suspect was apprehended by the property owner and a security guard and is believed to have been drunk at the time. The property owner suffered burns in the incident. Now, meanwhile, in another fire damaged a DVD outlet in Singatoka overnight. A police investigation of that incident is also underway. Water woes for some 260 families in the Malamala and Nawai areas of Nandi will soon be resolved. The Prime Minister's office has donated a little over $650,000 to help alleviate an age-old problem. Madhu Mboletamana spoke to Divisional Planning Officer West, Siti Venitavanga. The Commissioner Western's office has exhausted more than $700,000 to mitigate the effects of the prolonged dry spell. About 3,000 people on the outskirts of Nandi are now earmarked for a long-term water project. From Malamala, Dakandaka, and the upper of the Nandi area. That area, is, that area is the one that we mark as our red zone. 
because of this uh, long rest spell, those are the affected uh, area. Uh, there's one project that will be implemented soon. Uh, we are getting the funds uh, this week. Uh, it costs uh, that project for 90, uh, around $450,000. A local contractor will carry out the project that will start from Vanganra in the Nandi Highlands and will cover the wider Mala Mala region. The source is right in Vanganra, that is uh, up in the regions of Nandi and right down to Mala Mala, uh, Mala Mala area, to the main road. It, it will cover 3,000, uh, uh, the population will be 3,000, the families 256 families. A portion of the funds disbursed by the Prime Minister's office will see a water project also initiated on Malolo Island this year. Yeah, the project is at Malolo Island in the Mamanoda group. Uh, it costs around $170,000. So altogether for this month, we'll be starting with that uh, mitigation issues of uh, trying to solve the water issues in, the, in our Western Division. Groundworks for the Malamala Mala Water Project is expected to roll out as early as next week and is expected to take five months to complete. Madhyam Bolitamana, FBC News. The South Pacific Stock Exchange, or SPSE, could finally have new companies listed on the exchange, the first in four years. Helen Stoltz reports the SPSE saw some interest which didn't come to fruition, but 2016 is looking upbeat. South Pacific Stock Exchange Chief Executive Latili Tengoro says the inclusion of two companies took every effort her team had to offer. One company, whilst there was no listing, there was an application for listing assessed last year. Oh. A very strong entity and an entity that is planning to list in quarter one. So the approval has been granted. Another company is also undergoing due process, but Goro can't name names until all SPSC requirements have been met. She did say that capital gain or total return improved from 10% in 2014 to 15% last year. In 2016, the stock exchange is also looking to expand its reach in the region. The stock exchange is also looking offshore, the first step being a meeting with Papua New Guinea Trade Minister Richard Maru to discuss a partnership. We're looking at promoting the stock exchange, SBAC, as an access to finance uh, platform for other regional economies, the ones that don't have a stock exchange, you know, seeing if there's any opportunities in Samoa, in Tonga, in the Solomon Islands, New Caledonia, etc. Goro says while Fiji is a small island nation, Exploring overseas markets will help lessen SBSC's reliance on government grants. The PNG market exploration is due to begin in the first quarter of this year. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. The Fiji Sugar Corporation will be making an advanced cane payment of $2 per ton to all cane farmers. The payment is to be made this Friday. Prime Minister Vorenge Marama made the announcement in Lambasa this morning. The payment will be deducted from the third and fourth quarter payments. No FSC deductions will be made from this advanced payment. Sports now, and here's Jamie. Thanks, Amrita, and good evening. Coming up after the break, Sevens Legends arrives for Bailey's Carl Coast Tournament. And Fiji under 23 footballers fly out for historic Spain tour. Stay with us for this and more. Hola, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Organizers of the inaugural Uprising School Sevens believe the tournament will grow to become a premier competition for young players in the near future. This comes after the tournament came to an end at Lawanga Park in Singatoka this afternoon. Talen Daudakadaka reports. 12 teams got a chance to test the turf at Lawanga Park in the Uprising School 7s. Their performance earned good reviews from organizers who are now eyeing a bigger tournament next year. 
uh, a big part of the future going forward and we look obviously to add in uh, international school teams who already had interest from overseas. Uh, we just received word that the winner will be invited to Samoa School 7s uh, which they're including in their independent 7s and the Central Coast is inviting our winner as well so there's certainly a lot to play for uh, and we'll be adding in the, in the girls tournament as well so yeah we're very excited. Organizers were impressed by the level of competition despite the dry and dusty conditions. Perfect example of Fiji and Flair, you know, this is the, the, the roots of it. These guys are going to come through and claim uh, white jerseys in the not-too-distant future. FRU here to identify players, and this is what it's all about, uh, providing pathways for the, the next generation of stars. The Lin Memorial School walked away with the cup title and $4,000 prize money after beating Tuva 17-14 in the final. Talent Ota Kataka, FBC Sports. Former Australian dual international Lotte Tungiri says he is grateful to be honoured alongside some of the legends of sevens at the Rugby Town Walk of Fame in Singatoka today. Hundreds of rugby fans and players flocked Singatoka Town to witness Tungiri unveiling his plaque alongside some of the greatest players of the game like Waisale Serevi, Kaltanana and Jonah Lomu. Tungiri says that throughout his rugby career he would look up to these players for motivation. I had a lot of Serevi when I was growing up and you know, uh, being a Fijians, it's, uh, I'm very proud uh, of where I'm from and, and to be here today is, uh, and to be here for the next few days is, uh, is a very big for me. So. Tungiri's wife and three children will accompany him as guests at the Bailey's Fiji Carlco Sevens, which kicks off tomorrow. Fijian Rugby Sevens legend Waisale Serevi believes Fiji is the perfect training ground for any national team preparing for the Rio Olympics. Serevi arrived in the country today to be part of the Bailey's Fiji Coralco Sevens and caught up with FBC's Josephine Nabula. Famous for his goose steps on the rugby field back in his playing days, Waisale Serevi still continues to amaze the rugby fans with his presence. Tangao native is looking forward to being part of the Fiji's biggest sevens tournament in Singatoka. It was good to be back home and uh, to be part of the Coral Coast Sevens this year. I'm always looking forward. After one year, it's supposed to be November last year, but it didn't happen. But uh, to have the opportunity to come home and I thank uh, uh, Coral Coast and I thank Jay White and uh, all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to come back and be part of the Coral Coast. The 47-year-old has commanded Germany for participating and has urged other international teams to come and play against local clubs for better build-up. If I was a coach of a national team uh, wanting to learn uh, the fastest way to learn how to play sevens is to send a team across to Fiji because uh, it's, they have a lot of good teams. Uh, they train uh, three times a day like I was doing when I was young and uh, uh, a lot of good teams, uh, club teams, they beat national teams. The legend will be guiding the USA Serevi Select women's team during the tournament. The Serevi Select women's tour here with Coach Richie and uh, uh, all those girls are at the Olympic Training Center representing the Serevi Select. So oh, that's why I, the reason why I'm here to try and help them while they're here playing. The Coral Coast Sevens will be held at Lawanga Park from tomorrow. Josephine Navula. FBC Sports. Turn of Semi Kunatani to the Vodafone Fiji Sevens extended squad is set to boost Coach Ben Ryan's playing options. We were looking at uh, Kunatani as well. If he does arrive, he'll be with uh, with the training squad next week. Uh, before we choose the, we'll see what his fitness level is like before we choose the team to go to Wellington. Ryan will name his 14-member squad next Friday for the Wellington Sevens on January 30th and 31st. The Sydney Sevens will be held the following week. The Vodafone under-23 football players will be out to improve their match fitness and harness their skills during their tour of Spain. The team departed the country today and have six matches lined up. Josephine Navula has the details. Packed and all set for their first ever Spain tour, these players are keen on the tough task ahead. Coach Frank Farina says the tour will be an eye-opener for the players and will also be a great experience. It's our first steps in terms of uh, the Rio Olympics in, in preparation for the team. So six games in, in you know, just under three weeks is, uh, I think, fantastic preparation and, and a great experience for the players as well. Farina adds the results at this stage is not important and he will keep a close eye 
on how the players adapt to his system of play. We changed the system from previously, so as I said, this is the first step in, in terms of the, the road to Rio. So it's more about you know, how we play, um, how the players react to you know, the, the playing style that we, we want to play. Them. Fiji football is taking a total of 22 players for this tour to build up for the Rio Olympics in August. Josephine Avula, FBC Sports. And that's it from sports this evening. It's back to Amrita now with business. Vodafone Fiji has been recognized as the fastest mobile telecommunications network. Ukla, a broadband and internet speed testing company, has ranked Vodafone Fiji ahead of its competitors in terms of fastest mobile network, fastest 4G network and fastest internet provider. Chief Marketing Officer Rajneesh Prasad says this is a phenomenal and proud achievement. Whilst awards and recognitions are welcome, allocate, accolades, we recognize the importance to continue and deliver on our promise to customers. We continue to work hard to meet the changing customer expectations to remain relevant as a business. Vodafone Fiji says it spent over $100 million in network expansion since mid-2014. Isolated afternoon showers were experienced in some parts of Fiji. Tropical disturbance TD08F was located near 13.8 south and 160.8 west over northern Cooks. Associated active trough of low pressure affects southern parts of Kiribati and the Cook Islands. Meanwhile, a weak trough lies slow moving over Tuvalu and extends over Tokelau. Lombasa was a burning 34 degrees this afternoon, but the rest of the group wasn't far behind with all centers crossing into the 30s today. Tomorrow's forecast is for mostly fine conditions apart from afternoon showers in Suva and Lombasa. The outlook for Friday, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Recapping our headlines, police officers put on notice for any laxity in responding to complaints. Prime Minister's Northern Tour sees more benefits for people in Vanwalevu. And South Pacific Stock Exchange wants to break into the PNG market. Now on to this week's poll question. Do you support the decision to extend the rent freeze? Visit our FPC website to take part. Now you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. Hi, my name is Viviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and Today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Krish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana. I'm from Maltoka and I like, I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my rock and lollipop. Hola, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and Today FM rocks with my flip flops. Today's hit music on Today FM.